dark. We'll dream about the sun. In the dark we'll seek the light. Warms our hearts, everyone. If we hold on together, I know our dreams will never die. Dreams see us through to forever, as high as souls will fly. The clouds roll by for you and I. Pacific Corner, presented by Jennifer. If we hold on together, Chapter Two, written and read by Jennifer. Okay, before we get started, um, for those of you who have not yet seen Chapter 1 of If We Hold On Together, um, I recommend you go and check that out right now, as this is a story that builds on the chapters, and then come back and watch this one. January passed into February, and Rayla and Callum's friendship grew. They were, all, they were in all the same classes, so it wasn't unusual to see them together working on a school project. Rayla had also become friends with Callum's younger half-brother, Ezra. Every day, Callum and Ezra's father, Harrow, would drive the three of them to school, and every afternoon, Lejane would pick them up. Callum and Ezra would then spend a few hours at Rayla's house until their mom, Sarai, came home. In fact, both families had become so close that Callum, Ezrin, Sarai, and Harrow had a standing invitation to Sunday dinner with Rayla, Ruan, and Lee Jane every week. It was a cold morning in mid-February, so cold that school had been canceled for the fourth day in a row. So it wasn't surprising when Lee Jane answered the doorbell for Callum and Ezrin to rush right by her into the condo. Hi, Mrs. Zadia, the brothers called without looking back. Hello, boys. She said. Thanks for letting them stay here for the day, Lee Jane. Hera said again. It's not a problem, Lee Jane said. They're both very well behaved, and Rayla loves having them over. So I will pick them up this afternoon. Thanks again. After closing the door, Lee Jane went into the living room. All three kids were on the couch watching Relic Hunter on Prime Video. Or rather, Rayla and Callum were watching Relic Hunter. <coughs> Ezrin was far more interested in the Jane's pet, Budgie Fifi. Callum and Ezrin's coats, boots, hats, and gloves laid on the floor where they had tossed them. Okay, the Jane said, you two hang up your coats and put your boots away, and you, young lady, go make your bed like I told you to. Pausing Rollick Hunter, the three did as they were told. Once they had hung up their coats, stuffing their hats and gloves in their coat pockets, and put their boots Next to the front closet, Callum and Ezra made their way down the hall to Rayla's room. She had just finished pulling up her sheets, fleece blanket, and blue and black Marianne embroidered comforter and arranging her pillows, and was arranging her pillows and the accent pillow set with the comforter set on her bed, along with a stuffed red dream eyed dragon and a stuffed Sylvian. Practically every shelf and bookcase in her room was filled with DVDs and mostly books, and five books, a new dawn. Magic Blades, The Cat Who Went Bananas, Pegasus and the Order, Origins of Olympus, and The Enchantress Returns were sitting on the nightstand next to her bed, all in various stages of being finished. Mind if we keep these in here? Callum asked, holding up his and Ezrin's book bags. You can put them there, Rayla said, pointing to her purple corner computer desk. Her own book bag was on the bottom shelf, leaning up against her printer, copier, scanner and her laptop was on the pull-out keyboard shelf. Callum put his and Ezra's book bag next to Rayla's. Their mother had insisted they bring their schoolwork with them to Rayla's house, even though Callum had finished all his homework and, being in elementary school, Ezra rarely got any. Did you boys have breakfast? 
question that Shane asked when the kids came back into the family room and put their show back on. I had a bagel with peanut butter and jelly, and Callum had one with cream cheese. As Rin said, not taking his eyes off of Fifi. That's not breakfast, Lee Jane said. I'll make you some eggs and bacon. Once breakfast was ready, Lee Jane called all three kids, all three friends into the kitchen. The kids took a seat at the rustic drying nook table. The kitchen had an old farmhouse kitchen feel to it. Thank you for breakfast, Mrs. Badia, Callum said. You're welcome, Callum, Lee Jane said. Don't feed your ba- don't feed your bacon to the dog, as Ren Jim, Rayla's West Highlander White Terrier, wagged his tail as he tried to grab the bacon out of Ezra's hand. Zim had been a Christmas present for Rayla from her aunt and uncle, in the hope that he would not only help her make some new friends, but also take her mind off of everything that had happened. Come, Zim, Rayla said, getting up from the table. The puppy followed her out of the kitchen. Sit, Zim. The puppy obediently sat down in the doorway. Good boy. Stay. Can you teach Bate to be that obedient? Ezra asked as Rayla sat back down at the table to finish her breakfast. As Bate's a cat, Callum said. May we please play on the Xbox, Aunt Lee Jane? Rayla asked once breakfast was done. Clear your places first, Lee Jane said. Rayla, Callum, and Ezra picked up their plates, silverware, and glasses and put them in the dishwasher. If you need anything, I'll be right here studying for my test, Lee Jane said as the kids and Zim headed for the basement where the Xbox and Kinect was. Not only did Lee Jane have a test coming up to get her license to practice medicine, but she and Ru- Ruan also had a citizenship test coming up so they could become U.S. citizens. Rayla, however, wouldn't have to take a test since she was already a citizen. While she was raised in Scotland, she had been born in America and had dual citizenship. <coughs> Rayla's parents were both in America on student visas to attend college, engineering for her father and business for her mother, when they had met and fell in love. The summer before their senior year, they had gotten married, and Rayla was born just a few days after they had graduated. It was almost lunchtime when Lee Jane went down to to check on the kids. They had lost interest in the video games and were now in the middle of a game of Monopoly. So I was thinking, Lee Jane said, how about Taco Bell for lunch? Yeah! All three kids shouted at once as they abandoned their game. Go put your coats and boots on and get in the car then, Lee Jane said as the kids ran upstairs, followed closely by Zim. And Rayla put Zim in his kennel. Does he have to go in his kennel? Rayla asked. You know he does, Lee Jane said. If no one's here to watch him, he has to be in his kennel. But he hates his kennel. Can he come with us? No, he can't. We won't be gone long. Sorry, boy, Rayla said as she put Zim in his kennel. The little puppy looked at her with big eyes. He knew that sometimes work could get him out of his kennel. He'll be all right, Lee Jane said. He spends all night in his kennel and most of the day. The kids put on their coats and boots and got in the car while Lee Jane locked the doors. Rayla could park the car, they opted for the drive through What do you guys want? Lee Jane asked. The Nacho Grande mail, Rayla said. But I want my taco beef box shells. I'll have the same, Callum said. I want the quesadilla meal, Ezra said. What to drink? Pepsi, the brothers said. Cherry Pepsi, said Rayla. Can I take your order? The drive through attendant asked. Can I get two number fives with box shell tacos? Uh, number eight, an extra taco, a cherry Pepsi, two regular Pepsis, and a diet Pepsi, Jane said. Would you like the three taco meal? The drinks included, and you get two extra tacos. That's fine. The attendant gave her her total and told her to drive up to the second window. After paying, she handed the bag and drink holder to Rayla and told the kids they had to wait until they got home. Once they got back to the condo, Rayla let Zim out of his kennel and before hanging up her coat. The puppy followed her from the kitchen to the front closet and back to the kitchen. Stay, Zim. Rayla told him before he entered the kitchen. The puppy sat down obediently in the doorway, while Rayla took a seat at the kitchen table. After lunch, the kids took their pop back down to the basement with them to finish their game. About an hour later, they came back upstairs to watch the TV. At 4.30, the doorbell rang. Sarai, Eugene said when she answered the door. Come in. 
boys, go get your things. Your mom's here. Callum and Ezra ran off to Rayla's room to get their book back, while Rayla came into the room with a container. We made some cookies this afternoon, she said. This is Callum and Ezra's share. Thank you, Sarai said, taking the cookie tin. Will we be seeing you and your family for dinner? Sunday dinner? Jane asked. I'm making a roast. Of course, we would never miss Sunday dinner with the family. Three days later, it was a typical Sunday. After attending 8 o'clock mass at St. Lawrence, both families had gone to breakfast at the Savory. Once returning home, the kids had taken Jim for a walk in the nearby park, where and Jane and Sarai knew they would be gone for a while, since they would more than likely stop at the play structure to play. However, Jane and Sarai had told them to be back in time for dinner. While Hera and Ryan watched the game, Sarai and Jane went grocery shopping. They wanted to pick up some things to go with dinner, as well as do a week's worth of grocery shopping, and it was much easier without three kids putting extra treats in the cart. Rayla laughed as she slid down the slide, then held tightly in her arms. She loved playing at the park with her two friends. But it was getting cold, and they would have to head back soon. Besides, it was getting close to lunchtime, and even though she had a big breakfast at the savory, Rayla was starting to get hungry and figured Callum and Ezra were as well. They had burned up a lot of energy walking them and playing. Ready to get Ezra and head home? Callum asked, noticing how red Rayla's cheeks were getting from the cold. Rayla nodded. They didn't have a long walk home, but it was cold and getting colder. Though she did have to admit that she had fun. Before January, she hadn't spent a Sunday playing at the park with her friends in years. Back in Scotland, she and her friends would have spent Sunday at the mall. Once getting back to Stonegate, the friends made their way to Rayla's house. After hanging up their coats, Rayla put three French bread pizzas in the toaster oven. With the game still on, the friends took their lunches downstairs and watched fly away home. Who'd like to say grace? Ran asked once everyone was seated at the table. I think it's Ezra's turn, Rayla said. Seated between his parents, the 11-year-old felt everyone's attention on him, but he didn't mind. Unlike his older half-brother, Ezra liked being the center of attention. Thank you for the food, he said, and for the four days off from school. Ezra, Sarai said. What? I liked having the time off. So what's on the agenda for school next week? Jane asked, changing the subject ever so slightly. We're going to start reading Where the Red Fern Grows in English class, Callum said. Then we have to write a report on it. I read that book when I was in school, Harrow said. So did I, said Sarai. It's very good. Sad, but good. Why is it sad? Mila asked. You'll find out when you read the book. I wouldn't want to spoil it for you two. Two weeks later. It was a typical Friday lunch hour. Callum and Rayla sat at their favorite table talking while they had lunch. Because neither of them really liked the fish sticks that the school served during Lent, they had brought lunch from home and had laughed at how similar they were since they had both brought Chef Barbecue microwave Chef Barbecue macaroni and cheese microwave cups, a small garden salad with tuna fish, a bottle of fruit punch, and a Smucker's Uncrustable uncrust Sandwich with peanut butter and jelly. The only difference was the jelly in their sandwiches. Rayla had strawberry, while Callum had grape. Captain Marvel came out today, Callum said. Do you want to go see it tomorrow at Partridge Creek? Rayla nearly choked on her juice. Had Callum asked her out on a date? She did like him, but she wasn't ready to take the relationship to the next level yet. She liked that they were friends. My mom or stepdad can drive us, Callum continued. I'll buy the tickets if you want to buy the snacks, and then the next time we go to the movies, we can switch. Rayla let out a sigh of relief. Callum wasn't asking her on a date. He was asking her to the movies as a friend. That sounds like fun, she said. My aunt and uncle can pick us up afterwards. Just don't say anything to us. He'll want to come with us, and Mom doesn't want him watching the Marvel movies because he's too young. Rayla couldn't help but look forward to the weekend. She was going to the movies on Saturday with her best friend, and the next day their families would be having Sunday dinner together. If she had known how things were going to turn out, she never would have made such a fuss about moving.
Before I sign off, uh, I would like to say for all you fanfic writers out there, if you would like me to do a reading on fanfic corners of your fanfic or short story, um, please send it to me at either my Tumblr account or my Facebook page. I will have the links for both in the description section. Uh, well, not Facebook if you're watching on Facebook, obviously. Uh, just a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, first off, please include your name or the name of the author of the fanfic or short story. Um, if I do not have an author to credit, I won't do the reading. Uh, that's only fair to the author who put in the work of writing the fanfic. Uh, second off, if it's long, I will divide it up like I do with mine. I'll probably do a chapter or part. Um, that's because I like to keep these videos relatively on the short side, under 30 minutes, because that's how my camera can handle. Thirdly, uh, try to keep it clean. I will clean up or gloss over any words or parts that I deem inappropriate. But if there are too many inappropriate words and or parts, I just, I won't do the reading on that. Uh, I just, I don't want kids hearing or anything that's not appropriate. Lastly, please be honest. If I learn that a fanfic or short story was written by someone else and was submitted without his or her approval, I will not only remove the corresponding videos to that fanfic, but I will also no longer accept fanfics or short stories by that sender.